Hey everybody, my name is Chris and welcome to First LG. We're excited you're here with us today. Whether you're joining us online or at our drive-in service, we are glad you're here. We have several opportunities to connect this week. For our elementary kids, Woodlands Camp is still on. Woodlands Camp brought a lot of fun to our campus last year, including their amazing leaders who deeply impacted the lives of our kids here at First LG. We cannot wait for them to join us and touch the lives of our kids once again. You can find sign-up information on our website or through the Church Center app. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for current updates, and be sure to like, follow, and share us with your friends. Connecting with us is so easy, and nothing makes our day more than hearing from you. We have two ways to connect today. Head to our website, fbclocusgrove.com, and click on the live chat image to chat with us during the message, or click on Get Connected to send us a digital connect card. Either way, we would love to hear from you and come alongside you in your journey. Thanks again for being with us today. We hope you have a great time while you're here at First LG. Morning, First LG. Wow, it's so good to see you guys today. Woo! <laughs> Well, happy Mother's Day, and you know what? We are so bummed this year because we typically make a big to-do and because we want to lavish affection on our mothers and mothers-to-be, and so here's, uh, just, we just want to pause and just first of all, let's, hey guys, let's give it up to our ladies, all right? <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Yeah, come on. And I hope that, uh, you know, we're going to have a great time next year. We're going to make it, do it up big like we typically uh, do, but we're going to have a great focus of, of lavishing affection on you guys next year with this season, and we're able to, not able to connect and inter interact in the way that we want to, but uh, we just want to just simply say thank you for being here, and we just thank God for you, ladies. Well... As we begin this, uh, first of all, before I move forward, I want to thank those of you who are joining us online. We are so grateful that you have chosen to be with us, and we are delighted to connect with you. And, and if you will, just click on the live chat if you are following us uh, through our church website, and we'd love to connect with you through that medium that platform. Also, we have YouTube and Facebook as well. And if you're on Facebook, uh, please, please feel free to comment on us and let us connect with you that way. It will be absolutely our privilege to help encourage you to take your next step with Jesus Christ. And so today, what we're going to talk about how is about, as we've talked before and we touched on it before, there are a whole bunch of new normals, right? There are. And from this time, you know, so many new things have come about in this time of the pandemic. We have new social etiquettes, social distancing, and we don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, we have new fashion, right? We, 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 we're like the masked people now, right? Now, some of you are really creative with those masks. Your personalities are really coming out with the design of those masks. But also, we have new struggles that have popped up that we haven't struggled before. For example, how many of you heard expression, this expression, I'm just so zoomed out? Yeah, yeah. If you're a teacher, educator, if you're, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I've had so many Zoom meetings. I um, have been online so much, I have Zoom fatigue. That's a new thing. That's a new thing. Now, and some of the things that we discovered that aren't really, that isn't new, but because we rediscovered it, it feels new. For example, who knew that you could have food that comes from a pan instead of a bag? <laughs> right? We've discovered or rediscovered that, right? Um, but a lot of these moments thrust into, because for example, one of the things that we find ourselves rediscovering or even discovering are spiritual pursuits. And one of the things that we want to talk about as we establish, I hope that we don't just engage in pursuing God 
in the old way. I hope this becomes a, a new thing. In fact, one of the things that we're going to talk about today, the thing we're going to talk about today, is about a new way to pray. Because we, I believe that unless we discover this new way to pray, I'm concerned that we're missing out on the power of what God intended for us to experience in our prayer time. And so we're going to unpack what that means. And because I believe when we learn how to, you know, discover a new way to pray, it's not necessarily new. It's a rediscovery for some of us. But it feels new because we probably haven't heard of it. But, and, but when we go unpack this, it will radically affect the rest of our lives and perhaps change our lives forever. For example, you know, we had Grubhub and, you know, DoorDash and all those food delivery services before. But after a while of cooking home-cooked meals, some of us have decided to get some takeout. And who knew that you could have so much food delivered, so many, you know, sources and so many restaurants could be giving us food to our door. That's a game changer, right? That's a new normal that I don't know if we're ever going to go back to. Come on, think about it. When was the, have you ever thought that you could get Burger King delivered to your door? Who would have thunk it? And yet, that is such a reality. And in a similar way, but a much more profound and life-altering, changing way, is the new way to pray. That's what we're going to talk about. And, and I hope it changes everything about us. Now, when it, come, when it comes to the subject of prayer, prayer is oftentimes we approach it as simply connecting with God, right? We think of prayer as a connection. I talk, he listens, we connect, right? That's what we think when it comes to prayer. That's typically how we approach prayer and, and understand prayer. But what we're going to cover is that prayer can be so much more than connection. See, this new way to pray involves prayer being more than a connection, prayer being a interaction. See, that's what do I mean by interaction? Well, I mean prayer can be a two-way conversation instead of a one-way monologue. For example, I don't want to just talk to him. I want him to talk to me. See, I, I just don't want to, you know, give my request to him. I want to know, God, do you have requests of me? Right? See, when prayer switches from a one-way request line, you know, we, we act as if God is, you know, the great DJ in the sky, and we ask him to play our favorite hits. If we shift from that to allowing him to say, God, to allow, you know, go before him and say, God, what do you have for me? Okay, what do you want to say to me? See, that's when the power of prayer is unlocked. See, most typically, we connect with God because we want him to do things for us, right? We do. We want him to stop this or start that. Okay, make this happen. Oh, please don't make this happen. Let this happen. And, and God doesn't mind that. He doesn't. But what would happen if we would switch over and we talk to God because we want him to do things in us instead or as a, alongside with those other things? See, not just for our lives, but prayer as God doing something in our lives. In other words, what would happen if we wanted to connect to God to be changed by God? What kind of difference would that make? See, and for a lot of people, it's a new way to pray. For a lot of us, it's a rediscovery. See, because typically, what do we do? We pray God to bless us, right? Please, Lord, bless this, bless that. Take care of this. Take care of that. God, I need answers to a decision. I'm having a problem with an issue. Lord, give me direction. Give me a response and give me an answer about that. See, we want to ask God for our health, you know. God, please protect us from this. Protect so-and-so from that. And come on, if we're really honest, you know what we pray for? We pray for money, right? 
oh God, I need cash. I don't care how you bring it, just give me some cash. Let me drop a gold bullion in the, first, in the front door. It doesn't matter, just give me cash. And here's what I'm trying to unpack. Those are the times, type of prayers that we typically pray, and there's nothing wrong with that. God doesn't mind that. He welcomes that. That's who he is. He's that good. But do we also pray that God deals with our pride? Do we also pray that God would deal with our worries on the inside? Do we also pray that God would deal with our lust? Do we want God just to bless us? Or do we want him to, to reach some of the deeper things in us? To address some of the, the core of who we are. See, that's where prayer takes a whole new direction. See, we have a tendency to tell God to go in this direction and tell God to go in that direction. But are we willing to receive a direction is the question. And I think the reason why we don't, and if we're really honest, is because there are some things that we don't want to hear from God. But those are the things that we need to hear. Because he does love us. And he wants the best for our lives. See, when prayer becomes this interaction... Right? When prayer becomes, when we come to the point of going before God and open ourselves to hear whatever he has to tell us, that's when prayer becomes exponentially more powerful in our lives. Now, so I've, since I've explained that a little bit, let's, I want to address how this type of new way to pray plays out. First thing we need to recognize is this. The way we see God determines how we interact with him. The way we see God determines how we interact with him. Because if we see God as this angry man upstairs, we're going to find it difficult to interact with a God like that. See, some of us, we see God as the Santa Claus, this cosmic Santa Claus, where we give him our list, and if we're good enough, he gives us some things on our list. But the problem with that perception of God is that what happens when we haven't been so good? We're not so apt to go to him, are we? You see, how we see God does determine how we interact with him. In fact, A.W. Tozer said that the, the most important thing about us is our thoughts about God. And he's so dead on about that. And the new way to pray is that we need to understand that God, instead of having those approaches or have those perceptions of him, instead go to him and we speak to him in a simple, natural, honest conversation. That's what he wants us to do. Did you know that God wants to laugh with you? He does. He wants to laugh with you. God wants to hurt with you, to go through those points of pain, to be with you and engage with you when you're crying. See, God wants to have that natural, honest, simple conversation with each and every one of us. But because we're not so sure how God feels about us sometimes, we slip into what I describe as role-playing when it comes to praying. Role playing. You see, this is why some people, when they pray, they become a more religious, more spiritualized version of themselves all of a sudden. You know, because we think that's what God expects of us. Have you ever been in a situation where, you know, you've been talking with somebody, hanging out, and all of a sudden there's a time to pray, and that person who prays automatically sounds completely different and speaks completely different than the way they normally speak? It's like, Okay, man, let's get together and let's pray. Oh, who art thou up in the clouds? You know, I mean, like, dude, where'd you go? <laughs> right? What happened here? Why do we do that? See, that's a, an example of role playing. There are two reasons why we pray like that. One, it's because we've been told that we should pray like that. Or the other reason is because 
that's what we think God expects. And every time we role play, it unveils our view of God. Because we believe that when we do role play, it's oftentimes because we think that God will not receive us unless we're a better version of ourselves. And God won't talk to us and won't hear us unless we're a better version of ourselves. In other words, he does not like us the way we are. See, every time we role play, it reveals something about the way we see God. And guys, that is so wrong. That is so not the way to pray. In fact, Jesus addresses and back in his day, Jesus described this group of people who were very religious. And there was a group called the Pharisees. And, and they were these religious people. They were very, very they were scholarly. And, and what they did was they would stand out in public places and pray out loud. These loud, eloquent prayers. And if you didn't know the rest of the story, you would think that Jesus would be like, very good. Because after all, I mean, I mean, they're out there, right? They're out there in front of all these people. Look at them. They're expressing their faith in public like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would think that. But that's not what Jesus says. See, in fact, Jesus was not a fan of that type of praying. Now, he loved them as people without question. But he actually taught against that when it came to teaching on prayer. And the reason is why is simply because Jesus understood the motivation. He knew that behind such prayers of those people, they were just being prideful. They were being arrogant. They were simply using... Their prayers of, dis of displaying how morally and spiritually superior that they were over everybody else. It's like, hey, check me out. See, and isn't that crazy how we can do that? Take something as, some something as precious as prayer, something as good as prayer. And we have a tendency to do that with all kinds of things, the way we worship, the way we... I mean, but that's what was going on in this situation. And so when Jesus taught on prayer, Jesus actually used that scene as an example of how not to pray. So if you have your Bible, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to begin with verse 5. Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse 5. And if you don't have your Bible with you, it's okay because the words are going to be presented on the, your screen. If you're following us online, the words are going to be up here on our screens in person. But it reads as follows. It says, and when you pray, this, this is what Jesus tells us. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. He just unpacked it for us. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. And then he gives us some direction about this new way to pray. Verse 6 says, but when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, you know, people who don't know God. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And if truth be told, this is new to a lot of people. And this might be a rediscovery for some of us today. See, Jesus is telling all of us that God wants our prayer life to be characterized as a private, natural conversation. Private, honest, simple, natural. See, we don't have to babble on. We don't have to read him a book. See, you don't have to use key spiritualized words as if they're magical. 
You don't have to role play and pretend like you're somebody else. You don't have to sound like Shakespeare when you pray. You don't have to be loud and proud as if you have. Have you ever been in a situation where people come around? I hate to say that I've been in situations, and I'm, I think you know what I'm talking about. People get together and pray, and it's like some people get together and they have a pray off. You've heard of the playoffs? They have a pray off. I'm like, what in the world? You know, it's just nuts. You don't have to do any of that. See, when we are tempted to do those things, that's not an interaction. That is not a conversation. You know what that is? That's a presentation. That's a presentation. And why are we presenting? He already knows what we've done in private. He already knows what we said in private, as if some good presentation is going to cover up for that. God already knows us, and he loves us anyway. And whenever we take on the presentation style of praying, we always miss out on the power of prayer. See, God wants a simple, honest, natural conversation with him. And here's what happens when we do. That's when our focus shifts from us. And it shifts to him as it should. And here's what simple, honest, natural, conversational prayer sounds like. It sounds like this. It sounds like, God, thank you for this gorgeous weather today. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it's, I mean, God, I'm so grateful. I know that usually it's warmer this time of year, but I'm just grateful it's cooler because otherwise, when I'm preaching outside on stage, I'd be sweating, and I'm just glad I'm not. That's what natural, honest, simple, conversational prayer sounds like. It also sounds like this. God, this ice cream is so good. When's the last time you thank God for ice cream? It seems like you haven't had good ice cream lately. <laughs> when was the last time? See, see, honest, simple, natural, conversational prayer sounds like this. God, I'm nervous about the meeting I'm about to have. Because there's this person there, and that person intimidates me. And so, I just want you to know I'm nervous, and can you help me? See, honest, simple conversation sounds like, God, that was a good movie. It was so good. Or, wow, God, what a sunset. That's what it sounds like, guys. That's what it feels like. Now, the problem is, occasionally, there'll be people, maybe you feel this way, this is, and sometimes inside of us that says, yeah, I want to push back on that because, no, you cannot talk like that to an awesome, holy, omnipotent, almighty God. I mean, how dare you talk like that? And if you kind of think about it on the surface, you're kind of going like, well, I can see how that can be because after all, I mean, come on. I mean, you can't talk to God about Baskin Robbins, Right? Except Jesus tells us otherwise. <laughs> That's the, verse 9. Check this out. Then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. See, when we read that in English, I think sometimes we miss out on the impact of how Jesus tells us to pray. See, the very word translated father is the Aramaic word Abba. And sadly, there's not an English equivalent to that word that fully captures what that term Abba means. So we've got to have to look at various other disciplines to get the full understanding because a lot of people have written a lot of things around that one word. But in essence, it describes a warm, personal interaction that is more closely related to the way we express 
daddy. Or more accurately, I'm convinced, da-da. In fact, linguistical studies tell us that the term, you know, like when our babies learn how to speak and identify their parents, there's not a single baby that comes out of the womb and goes, thou art my father and you are my dearest mother. And the babies don't do that, right? What do babies do? They learn like this, mom, right? Da, da. Simple phonetics, the basic terms to describe and identify the one that loves you most. The Aramaic version of those simple phonetics, like da da, is ab. So when we hear Jesus saying, when you pray, pray to your heavenly ab. It's the picture of the most small child learning how to communicate with their father. Abba. Abba. And why would Jesus teach us how to pray like that and call our heavenly father, our heavenly dada? Because he wants a warm, relational tender conversation with us that is simple and honest and natural. He doesn't want to simply connect with us. He wants to interact with us. And when you know God as your heavenly dada, it changes the way you pray. It does. See, some of you were blessed to have a warm and personal earthly father. And I say blessed because the fact is, is that in our kind of world, that is becoming fewer and far further between. And so first of all, you need to be thankful. But if you had one, here's what you know. You can go to him about anything. Say, hey, Dad, I just want you to know I'm bored. <laughs> or, Dad, I, I messed up. Dad, I, I need... What do I, how do I handle the situation? I need some advice about this decision. Or, God, Dad, I, I just, I, I need to have a hard conversation. And I need to have a process this hard moment. And it's easy for you to do because your warm, earthly father have always been like, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Right? And he can help steer us through the hard time, and enjoy the good times with us. And here's the deal. Whether you've had a good earthly father or not, the good news today is that every single one of us here today, God wants to be your heavenly dada and more in our lives, and we can have that relationship with him right now, today. And that's the good news, and it will change the way we live. See, he wants to interact with us about the hard decisions in life. He wants to come, us to come to him and say, this is a conversation i got to have. He wants to interact with us when we messed up. Did you get that? He wants to interact with us when we mess up. That's who he is because he's our heavenly dad. And what we're going to find is when we engage him this way, when we interact with God in this manner, it will change the way we interact with everyone else in life. It has that type of impact in our lives. And so let's go to him. He is our heavenly dada, and he loves you. He loves you. And the power of prayer is experienced when we engage him that way. So what's the best way to start? How do we start this? Well, let me suggest that this. Like in any relationship, it's very important that we listen as much or even more than we talk in order for relationships to grow strong, right? 
we know that practically, you know. And in a similar way, that's a good starting point for us as we interact with him as our heavenly data. Go find our private place. I'm going to encourage us to do it every morning. Go find our private place. And with a posture of you speak. And in the silence, just enjoy being in the presence of your loving, heavenly dad. Just enjoy it. Just be there in that moment. And there are times that he's going to speak inside of us. Certainly he will speak when we have the Bible open with us during those times through his word. Because it's a primary source of his communication to us. And then there are other times where we will simply experience his loving presence as if there's a big hug around us in those moments of private interaction with him. And as a response to that, speak. Whatever is on your mind. Whatever you're dealing with. In a simple honest, conversational way. And it may be a lot to say or maybe very little, and it's okay. It'll vary depending on the day. But as you have that moment and have you have that type of praying, here's what we're able to do throughout the day as a result. Because we have allowed ourselves to be in that moment. We're able to go through the day. We're able to step into that moment in our hearts and have that conversational prayer within and kind of step back in. You know how you slip into inside and have that conversation with God along the day? We're able to do that and slip in and out throughout the day. And we can experience and take hold of his presence and experience him that way. And when the times do come that we are asked perhaps to pray publicly, we're able to present ourselves and bring forth that very context of easy conversational prayer. See, eloquent prayers might impress people, but honest prayers with your heavenly dada draws people to him. One highlights you. The other highlights him. And when we do pray in public, it changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere. So, that's how we begin. Just let them interact with you. And here's the reality. Some of us haven't prayed like that in a long time. And perhaps some of us, we maybe have never prayed that way. But you can start today because he's right here. He's always been here. He's always been here waiting for us to interact with him, to do so through his son, Jesus. You see, when we have this interaction, it's possible because Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. And because of what Jesus has done, Because Jesus has paid for every mess, every sin that we've ever done, every sin that we will ever do. Isn't that amazing? He paid for all of that on the cross. And he is waiting for us to engage in an interactive communication conversation with him. So what are you waiting for? What's keeping you? From having that. So when are we going to start having this interaction, this conversation? For some of us, it starts today. I hope for all of us, we deepen our prayer life in this new way to pray. But for some of us, it starts today because today is the day that we discover a new relationship with Jesus. Because if truth be told, for some of us, we've been spiritualized. We may even been Christianized. But our faith has not been personalized. Why? Because for so long, 
We've been presenting. We've been role playing to others <laughs> before God. And maybe today's the starting point. We actually come to a point where we say, God, I want to know you for real in a real, simple, and honest, conversational way. And if that's you, this is how you begin. You begin with a prayer. And you simply pray, Heavenly Father, I want a conversation and I want a relationship with you. Forgive me for my sin. And I thank you that you paid for my sins on the cross of Jesus because of the cross of Jesus. I want to turn from living my own life. I want a life with you as I make Jesus the Lord of my life. Maybe your prayer can be as simple as that. And if you prayed that prayer, if you're willing to pray that prayer today, well, congratulations. You have stepped into the family of God. And God is now your heavenly dada. So if you want to make that decision, there, we want to help you with it. In fact, I want to show you a slide. Those of you who are here, if you want to make that decision, or if you just want to talk with someone, if you need to pray with someone, call or text one of these three numbers. We have some people waiting to respond. If you are online, you know, click that live chat button that's on our church streaming platform. Perhaps if you're on Facebook, you can comment us. We want to help you. We want to, because we don't need to let this moment fade without praying in a new way without interacting with God in a new way. So why don't we do this today? Why don't we make a decision that we're going to stop connecting with God and we're going to start interacting with him? May we do that today. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. I am so delighted. It's a delight to see you face to face. And I know as we move forward, we're going to see more of your faces, not just here, but also in the drive in the drive-in. God bless you. Have a great Mother's Day, and I will see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.